Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through and reviewing PC Linux OS. We'll first explore its contents and everything that it has to offer with its default desktop environment, and then I'll go ahead and give it some ratings. My first impressions are that it has a simple layout here with the KDE Plasma desktop environment, which I chose to download and install. The desktop is very uncluttered and there's plenty of space opened up. The only thing currently located on the desktop background is the Dolphin file manager, as you can see here. And then of course the basics to get you around the operating system, such as a taskbar and a little shortcut in the top right. The default background wallpaper is fairly dark with some geometric patterns, as you can see. And the taskbar seems to kind of blend into the background because they have similar dark gray colors. I like the fact that you can put items on the desktop screen. Some distributions don't allow this. And I do like organizing my files on the desktop that is pretty important to me. Also one side note is that I did have trouble with their login screen and displaying where to input my password when I was logging in, but that just might be a bug on my system. It was just something interesting that I came across. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the PC Linux components here and get a feel for what's in included in this operating system. Also, if you're new and stopping by to watch a review today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more reviews. So you can of course highlight in the background and move stuff around as necessary. So of course I do like the fact that you can do this and that you can put stuff on the desktop screen here. On the upper top right corner here, we have a little shortcut menu, which is native to the KDE Plasma desktop. And you have such options as adding widgets, going to activities, locking down widgets, opening the Dolphin, the file manager that you have installed here and configuring the desktop. You can also lock the screen from here. It's just a nice little shortcut menu that you have in the top right. Go ahead and exit out of that. And let's go ahead and change the background here so we can have a bit of a lighter color. So if we go to the configure desktop, you get to see the desktop folder settings for Plasma here and the various different wallpapers that we have. So this desktop environment only comes with the default wallpaper, which was the one that you of course see in the background, but I went ahead and hit the get new wallpapers option and downloaded a few more. I got the starry nebula here and the outdoor nature scene here as well. So I'm just going to choose one just to change it up a little bit and see how it looks. So uh, you can simply hit the apply button. As you can see in the background, we've now changed the picture. I think this makes it a little bit better, kind of distinguishes the taskbar a little bit better from the background image. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. Uh, and I do enjoy this background here because it is a very beautiful nature scene. I seem to be very partial to that. And in the bottom right hand corner, you have a few options here. You can click and change up the taskbar if you so choose to do so and you can add widgets as well as spacers and there's more settings. You can of course exit out of here. And then you have on the left of that, the time and date currently, the uh, volume, so you can adjust the volume from here, the clipboard contents, what's currently copied, uh, the most recent device used to create different uh, folders uh, that are encrypted vaults, I believe they, they call it, Bluetooth information. You have some reminders as well as the current connected wired connection or wireless if you have a wireless connection and some notifications here on the far left. On the left hand side of the screen, we have a few shortcuts here. One is the Synaptic Package Manager. So you can go ahead and download and install various packages onto this computer. So if you need different applications, it's a great thing to use. You can configure the computer access the settings and go ahead and access their Dolphin file manager, which seems to be very popular because it's located in about four places here. You have it here at the bottom left. You have it on the background screen as default. I can notice that this is pretty hard to see now in the top right corner, but in here you can also open Dolphin up here as well as if you right click, you can also open Dolphin up. So you have plenty of places to access that from. It's kind of great to know that you can open the file manager from just about anywhere. I'm going to change the desktop wallpaper one more time because it's kind of hard to see that little shortcut here in the far right corner. 
and now I can see it a little better with Starry Nebula. I also like this one. It's got some cooler colors here, which I do enjoy. And let's go ahead and check out what their start menu looks like. So in the lower left hand corner, if we hit the icon there, we can see that they have different subcategories available to us, such things as applications, archiving, configuration editors, graphics, internet, office, and a few more other things here. They have the power session, which you can log a user out, lock down the computer, switch users, hibernate, restart, and shut down, as well as you actually have a couple of those options here on the left-hand side, such as log out, restart, and shut down. You can also search for various things on PC Linux OS by simply typing in to the search bar. So if I'm searching for a terminal, their default terminal is called console here is what they're using. So it's very easy to search for applications instead of looking through all the shortcuts. Go ahead and take a moment to like the video if you're in this far, it really does help me out. And what I'd like to do is go ahead and check out their file manager, which is Dolphin here. We'll go ahead and start that up. As you can see, it's got pretty dark background by default. On the right hand side up here, you have some bright colors. As you can see, you have access to various folders on the home directory, which it's the current home directory of whoever's logged in. So Savvy Nick is logged in. So this is Savvy Nick's home directory. And we have access to the typical things such as desktop, downloads, music, pictures, etc. On the left hand side, you also have another place where you can access those from, as well as accessing the network and networking any devices that you might want to with the system on the network. And then the 27.7 gigabytes of hard disk space available for this system. Removable devices as well, so your USB, CDs, DVDs will show up in this left-hand corner down here by removable devices if you haven't plugged them. On the bottom right here, you have a scroll so you can make your icons a lot bigger. As you can tell, it's up to 256 by 256, I would assume, a square here in size. That's in pixels, of course. So you can make them as small or as big as you want. And how much free space you have available. So you have 19.5 out of that 27.7 gigs available. So let's make this a little smaller here. That's great. And we have different options up at the top left here. You can look at it in this current view. Or you can change the view to be a more compact view, a list of items, as well as trees of items. So you can see here, now I have a tree which I can open up and view various documents and files on each of the subcategories, which are my directories. But I like using this view the most actually, so the list view is fine for me. We can also do a search if you click the search button up here and search for different types of file names and different types of content here in the current directory or every directory on the system if you suit, if you want to. You can also split the screen up top if you want. If you hit the split screen, now I have it replicated in two spaces here and I can use them for various different things so I can be on two places at once. See, I'm on the home folder as well as my documents which has nothing in it. I can close that view down and it'll just default back to the main view that you had before. In control, you can go ahead and look through the various control options in show or hide hidden files as well as sort by different types of categories here different types of view modes, which we already looked at. They call it the icon mode, the compact and detail mode. You can reload the display here, as well as configure Dolphin, so you can have different types of sorting modes by default and previews, as well as colors and all the other fun stuff that you can edit here in Dolphin. We'll go ahead and cancel out. I do like the fact that it's fairly dark here, um, and it's not transparent at all with this file manager. It makes it really easy to see things. Everything's colored in white as far as text goes. So it really does pop out on this dark gray background. We're gonna go ahead and exit out of Dolphin now and then check out their terminal. So if I just search for terminal, we should be able to find it here. And it's called console here. Load that up. So here they have a little different take on it. What they've done is they've defaulted console to have a white background with darker text as you can see here while I'm typing. I do like the fact that it is two completely opposing colors so you can see your text very well and that there's no transparent background which allows things to mesh that are in the background with the text that you have in your console. This is always a bonus for me. 
It has the username Savvy Nick and it shows you what the host name is, which is currently localhost. If we type commands in, they show up as gray, and then you have the various folders showing up as this darker blue color, and then some light blue colors as well as this green here, which they all look fairly good. The light blue and the uh, bright green do kind of clash with the background, which is white, but it's not overwhelming, although it does hurt my eyes just a little bit here trying to look at the various items. But of course, this isn't a showstopper. You can simply change the layout here in settings. So it's not too big of a deal. Other options you have, you can create new windows and tabs or clone a tab here in the file menu. Edit, you can paste, select different various things. And in the view, we can enlarge our font so you can see your font a little better if you want to. This is a great thing to use whenever you're showing someone commands. And I probably should have done earlier. You can also create bookmarks, add them in, and create new folders as well as change up settings for the console. So if you feel like configuring the console and making it look a little different, you can always do so. Console is pretty robust, so there is quite a bit of things that you can change, unlike some of the other terminals available. So the one other thing that I'd like to do is log in as a super user. So I'm just going to do sue here and then put my password in. And as you can tell now, the name has changed for the user. It's root now, as well as it's in a red color. And we're in the Savvy Nick folder is what it's really telling us there. The host name still remains the same, of course, and but everything here is in red now. So let's just make sure that nothing else has changed here. Of course, the colors have not changed for the folders and files, but you do get an indication that you're currently logged in as the root user with this very pronounced red color. I do like that. It kind of differentiates what user you're currently using if you have super privileges or not. Let's go ahead and run top real quick just to kind of get a feeling for what resources are being used. As you can tell, we've been up for about 20 minutes here. There's plenty of free available memory as well as all swap is currently available. So we have about 6.8 gigs of memory available out of the eight gigs total. So only 575 megabytes are being used. And if we look at the CPU usage, there's really not much being used here. Uh, it looks like console's actually taken up the most and that's about 1.3%. Xorg comes popping in and out here. So there's really nothing tasking running in the background here. Now that we've taken a look at this, we'll go ahead and exit out. And we get a warning here if we want to close out of the terminal window. I like selecting the do not ask again option and just hitting close window so I'm not asked more than once. PC Linux OS was founded in the early 2000s and is an independent distribution that is intended for everyday desktop users or beginners. PC Linux OS also offers three different types of desktops including KDE, Plasma, Mate, and XFCE. Users get to select a desktop environment that they enjoy so they can focus on their own enjoyable experience when it comes to using PC Linux OS. It tends to be a very user-centric operating system, including an easy-to-use installer and easy-to-use environments. PC Linux OS follows a rolling release model so it stays loaded with the latest packages available for its users. And this is a fairly good choice if you're a Linux beginner and want to venture out to something new. The last thing I want to really do before giving it some ratings is check out the settings. So let's see if we can get to it by just typing in settings here. So we have the advanced settings. Let's just check that out here. So advanced settings takes us to apparently power settings. So we'll just exit out of there. Let's go back to settings. Let's see, KDE system settings. And this is what I wanted. So this is the desktops settings here, but you can also access various different items such as the hardware, system administration, personalization, network settings, workspace settings, and appearance settings. And you can see in those subcategories, we have various different types of settings. So if you highlight one of these, you are able to see a brief description of what each setting could do for you. So if we go to shortcuts, it says it contains four items, global shortcuts, standard shortcuts, web shortcuts, and custom shortcuts. If we hit the display and monitor and scroll over, you see that you have access to display configuration, the compositor, gamma and night color, 
So let's just open that up real quick to get a view. As you can tell, I have a 1440 by 900 pixel rated resolution here. And the orientation here is no rotation. Very easy to use these system settings. And like it said, there's these other available subcategories if you want. If you hit the all settings, that takes you right back to where we were before. It's very easy to use. You can also search for other items in here. Cursors is a nice one to look through as well as the network settings or the power management are also very important things to look at while starting up your new system. And with a brief look on that, we'll just exit out and now I'll give it some ratings. So PC Linux is a Linux distribution that's climbing in the ranks and has been around since the 2000s. I'll give it a popularity rating of 7 out of 10. PC Linux OS offers some of the most user-friendly desktop environments that you can choose from. And as a beginner, you can use the KDE Plasma Mate and XFCE desktop environments. Therefore, the user can pick a desktop that they're most familiar with or comfortable with and customize it as needed. They also have a lot of support for various devices as soon as the system is installed. So I'll give it a user friendliness rating of 8 out of 10. EC Linux OS follows a rolling release model and does not offer a stable version. This gives it an advantage of being on the cutting edge of development, but lacks the more stable version for people who don't necessarily want the latest and greatest. There's plenty of drivers supplied right out of the gate, and there's really nothing to tasking installed with the default PC Linux OS distribution. So it gets a performance rating of 7 out of 10. The distribution is an independent distribution. PC Linux OS is an independent distribution developed by the PC Linux OS community and has been around for a while, since the early 2000s. The community seems to be nice and active and they follow the rolling release model, which allows them to stay on the latest and greatest of development. I'll give it a features rating of 8 out of 10. And finally, since it has been around for a while and there have been quite a few releases, it seems to have plenty of active members as well as it's climbing in the ranks lately, making a name for itself. I'll give it a sustainability rating of 7 out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 37 out of 50. I hope you enjoyed this review and walkthrough of PC Linux OS. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair, and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos, and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.